I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. Well, I didn't think it was personal until last week. Driving to an appointment, I was listening to Dave Ramsey's radio talk show. He began talking about people who criticize him and how that used to bother him, but no more. He said, and I quote, After selling over three million books, I've decided if you criticize something I've written, well, you are the moron. He laughed and giggled and continued, I mean, what have you done? End quote. I almost drove off the road. I mean, most of Ramsey's advice on cash flow and debt reduction is very good and extremely helpful to those that follow it. Unfortunately, following his advice on investments and withdrawal rates could be very harmful financially. In the past few years, I've pointed that out more than once. On May 9th, I published an article showing that Dave Ramsey's assertion that a person can earn 12% compounded annually in good growth mutual funds is inaccurate. As a fellow financial planner, Thomas DeYoung clearly showed Ramsey bases his 12% compounded return on a misunderstanding of the difference between an arithmetic mean return and a compounded return. The New York Times picked up the story and ran it on May 13th on their Bucks blog. The Times tried to contact Ramsey for comment. His team said he was unavailable because he was working on a new book. As usual, I received some criticism from Ramsey followers about my article. Regarding Ramsey's claim of 12% returns, one person wrote, he doesn't teach that anymore. You need to go to his 13-week course and get your facts straight. Well, Two days later, one of my readers sent me an email citing a new blog post where Ramsey said if a person invested $144,000 in good growth mutual funds, it would grow to a million dollars in 17 years. But while he didn't specify a rate of return, some simple math shows he was using 12%. So much for the belief that he isn't teaching the 12% return myth anymore. There are two reasons Ramsey's 12% figure is dangerous. One is that to even get near a 12% compounded annual return would require having almost everything, well not most, I mean everything invested in stocks. Now most professionals would consider that allocation far too risky for most investors, especially those that are retired. They also know that over a long period of time say about 80 years, stocks have returned closer to a 9% compounded return. The second dangerous assumption, based on a 12% return, a person can to expect uh, to withdraw about 8% annually of their investment portfolio without ever spending the principal. Now that's a dangerous assumption that Dave Ramsey has taught uh, for as long as I've been listening to him. 8% withdrawal rate. Now, a realistic long-term return for a properly diversified portfolio is 6 to 7%. So withdrawing 8% a year means you're going to eventually run out of money. And in fact, in one test I did between 1999 and 2009, a person would have totally run out of money during that period of time. And of course, that's at an 8% withdrawal rate. Now, until now, I thought those of us who challenged Ramsey's investment advice were trying to help educate a fellow professional. I've emailed Dave several times pointing out these errors. Of course, I've never gotten a, re a reply. Financial planners who focus on their clients' best interests are always learning and refining their knowledge and strategies. Now, Ramsey's remark on his show made it clear that for him, this is a personal attack. Apparently, he isn't secure enough to admit that he's been using inaccurate information. He seems to care more about being seen as right than about whether his advice is in the best interests of his followers. Now that's really sad. It's discouraging that someone who holds the trust and respect of a great many people isn't willing to keep learning and to correct his own mistakes. If you have a financial advisor who refuses to consider new ideas or take in new information, it may be wise for you to look somewhere else. Don't trust your retirement security 
to any advisor whose ego is more important than your financial well-being. Thanks for listening.